Hello. Today we will begin with part one of a three-part series on friction heating during braking. This series is intended for ANSYS users with previous knowledge and experience in building FEA models. Part one will cover our geometry, materials, moment of inertia, contacts, and mesh. Part two will cover model setup and kinetic energy verification, and part three will cover post-processing results. So to get started, let's take a look at our assembly. Our model is comprised of minimal geometry, including the brake pads and rotor. The pads are made of two pieces, a steel backing plate and a ceramic friction pad. Our rotor is a multi-body part consisting of the frictionally slash thermally significant portions and the inertially significant portions with altered densities. Using our geometry and densities, we can make preliminary estimates of the rotational inertia before starting the analysis. These can assist in making minor adjustments to the density of the inertially significant components so we can approach target values before verifying in mechanical. In this example, a slightly lower principal moment about the y-axis is predicted, but with an error of less than 1% based on mechanical's calculations. Moving over to Workbench, we're going to be using a coupled field transient analysis system. This will be found on the left side of your menu, and if not there, we can always go to View All and add it by clicking the check mark. Moving over to Mechanical, we can start by reviewing our geometry. Here we check the rotor to see that topology sharing is active, which it is, and then going down to the Properties option. In the details view, we can check the moment of inertia about the principal 1, 2, and 3 axes. Next, we verify our material assignments to ensure non-thermal portions of the model have altered densities. Here, we're using an insert material assignment to scope them to each component accordingly with the modified densities assigned and labeled accordingly. We do this to ensure the thermally significant portions of the model have the appropriate material properties so the thermal conductivity values are preserved. Closing the geometry and materials tabs, we can start reviewing our connections or contacts throughout the model. We'll start with the revolute joint applied to the rotor. This is gonna be used to apply that acceleration input and rotate our model up to our desired RPMs. Of note is the reference coordinate system here, which we need to orient so that our blue RZ free rotation is possible in the proper direction. Moving on, we have our frictional contacts between the brake pads and the rotor. A couple of details on the setup are the fact that we're have a friction coefficient of 0 0.25. We have small sliding off due to the fact there's a large amount of sliding in this model, and we have increased our normal stiffness factor to 10. This is so there's not a lot of penetration between the contact and the target, and thus the sliding can perform appropriately. The thermal conductance value here is set to manual, but this is the default value applied by ANSYS. And then within each of these contacts, we actually have command snippets. Here you'll see the first one, key op CID 1 of 1. This is critical in the fact that this opens up the thermal degree of freedom within our contact. Next, we have the R mod ifs 15 and 18. R mod of 15 designates what percentage of energy is converted into thermal energy during friction, and here we have it set to 1 or 100%. R mod of 18 is the ratio of how much energy is put into the contact side of our contact and the target side of our contact. Here, a value of 0.5 designates the fact that 50% will go to our contact and 50% will go to our target. Next, we'll move down. We have two bonded contacts in between our backing plate and our friction pad just to keep them together. And then we have our two joints. 
These are applied to the outside of our brake pads and they are allowing transit translation in the x direction. Again, this is reference to the reference coordinate system, which we set up ourselves. And this is going to allow us to apply pressure or a force onto each pad to create that friction for stopping. Moving ahead, we'll do a quick overview of our mesh settings. Nothing here is essentially critical except for the face mesh between the rotor and the pads. This is why we're using a hexagonal mesh because we want a nice structured surface for our contacts to work on. From here, you'll want to go to part two of our three-part series, focusing on model setup and kinetic energy verification. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.